Hey guys, it's Munoz Plays, here for episode 6 of my The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles playthrough. So let's start up where we finished that last time. Ryunosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out exactly what something she said jarred me. I feel there is a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. <clears throat> if that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry. You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your pardon words just now. What are you talking about, what contradiction? What new st student nonsense is this? Well, what parting word are you talking about, Ryunosuke? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such, such an idea f astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a fork and knife, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Counsel. If Miss Brett's words truly are a contradiction, where is the evidence to prove it? That one shows a fork. This one, the knife is dirty. Here we go. Take that! The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Bread had been eating before the professor was killed, yes. Go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs. Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? Extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Counsel? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a fork and knife. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. And take a good look at look at this steak, in particular the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness as she claims wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a f knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Objection! But what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry and couldn't help her. Whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, it really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. <clears throat> of course, this will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm 
Gonna put this rookie in his place. I've heard about, I've heard enough, you irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Of course, dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly the witness knows, <laughs> clearly the witness knows what this means. She realized the catastrophic implications the teeth mark had in the stake hat for her. Ryunosuke, do you know where you're going with this? It's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in a steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Inclusive evidence, how many times have I heard that today? You would know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? It was quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Has been what? Just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Attention! This is absurd. There can't be, I don't believe you, you Attention! have it. I don't, but there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. If that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. <clears throat> Very well, I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth? I'm guessing it's him, but let me think. Alright, I'm gonna go for Hosa Naka. Take that! The answer is. The answer is obvious, it's Inspector Hosa Naka. What? I, I have it? Yes. You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good stake. And as well as admitting to stealing korakuta sans coin, he told us that he slipped it under the stake. You, you, you watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, can you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Jin Jun, affirmative, of course. I may be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still, I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentleman if she mind me manhandling her meal till hiding something in it. 
In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nose's meal. Attention! But that makes no sense. The plate was taken from the victim's table. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stick, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course they didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. So you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over? Switch the plates. Well, after it happened, um, when I saw that the villain had been murdered right in front of my eyes, that like that I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stick and hit the coin underneath it. But then, when the waiter announced he was in an uncover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decides to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stick with the one on the foreign lady's table. You can't have. I never saw you do that. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what I had to be done. Uh, unbelievable. However, fear not, Prosecutor, son. What now? I swore on the brass buttons of my uniform. That is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant knows to switch the plates over, it means he took Mrs. Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosonaga. Yes? Earlier in this trial, you told, me, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. How can that? What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cool slab of tough meat. It can't have the slightest Objection. bearing on the case. No, you're not wriggling out this time, lady. I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you. No. You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the fence asked to see the, that play was to confirm something that the fem <laughs> thinks that he remembers. I'm not quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and the plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Here's the other steak in its plate. 
Please, feel free to examine it. The blood scene. Yes! Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhodo-san to have shot the victim. It, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. That's right. Miss Jasai Bread. It's you! I've done by a Japanese me, by a Japanese schoolboy. No, no! Please excuse my little outburst. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman, forgive me. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life, using Kurare. As you surmise, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because Kurare is unheard of in here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only need to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water, and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you who else? It's such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to, to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in the chair such that he wouldn't fall. There's no going back at that point, so I can cut to the plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Carrari in my handbag, and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Under your skirt? So I was right, there were two guns. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. A place where you were sure that I would notice it. 
and everything went according to plan. He noticed the gun as I intended. And then just as you've been down to pick it up. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion at which point the waiter, at which, which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhodo-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's why I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because, of course. You need to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Your Excellency? Yes. Everyone's here. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhoto san. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This can't be. Takesuchi Aoichi does not lose. Not to the likes of this this rookie student. You better start getting used to tough opposition. Are you Nefsuke Naruhodo? Y yes. This insult to the Ochi family name will never be forgotten. You've become conceited with age counsel, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Uchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. This, tr this trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. Thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what will it look like? I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Azogi? Yes. After this trial, you are to set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Never mind. As for you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Yes. 
In you I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing you, how you carry out. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryunosuke Naruhodo, not guilty. The court is now adjourned. believe what's happened I made it I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial Ryunosuke you finally pulled it off congratulations well I couldn't have done it without you thank you Kazuma <laughs> no no it was a pleasure to watch you at work so you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street don't forget Good, af Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Oh, I was wrong. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhodo-san's in innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result, too, you know. Oh, no. I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words show, should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Suzuto Mikotoba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mikotoba. Ah, uh, there you are. I believe the congratulations are in order. Naruto, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Asuki. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world in science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this. The spirit of the Asuki clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. 
That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Josiah Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Oh, uh, yes, sir. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's a true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Josiah Bird will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Yeah, I was right. Inspector Hosonaga! It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But what's all this consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? The British consular court will hear her case. Somewhere far away. Somewhere far away where our voices can't be heard. Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. And so as long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't invoke a consular court just like that. Can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brad can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student, today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming. And we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... You're right, there's no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest the carnival? As a head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosonaga-san, aren't you? Let's not worry about details for now. To the carnival, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, the carnival's food is second, second to none. I shall go and attend the paperwork for Naruhoto San's release. Oh, yes, thank you. So Josiah Brett won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma? Yes, Ryunosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. You are the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm. 
I'm not so sure about that. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it, for being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat, I never want to go through that ever again. I just, I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry, what do you mean? That's the point. Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like he believed in me when I said I didn't do it? I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed up into a corner, but being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, even then, well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. <clears throat> Believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stops looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it through your own efforts and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryunosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. Sounds serious, what? Ah, oh, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Hosonaga. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you, we'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain. Don't forget. Ah, yes, that too. So my very first trial came to an end. Cosmo. Professor Mikotoba. Susan who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't, had, hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. In a corner of that small, dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated breath. 
In time, they came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl-like sound. Suddenly, Sholm sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You see it, Wilson, he yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. I raised my dark lantern shutter, and the room slowly came into view. Sholmes was staring intently at one particular corner when he started whispering to me. The victim's most perplexing final words, the speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which she referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. So like two months later, we're on a steamship. Ooh. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events led to this curious murder. Pray, do excuse me. The cabin door was bolted from the inside when the man was killed. No marks to suggest the bolt was tampered with in any way. So, this would appear to be a locked room mystery. In his final moments, the victim scrawled a message on the floor. Hmm. Almost certainly with the ink from this upset bottle. A Russian word. So, the victim was a Russian man, then. And the letters are well-formed, suggesting he was compass mentis at the time. Hmm, this is a most extraordinary script. And evidently, not penned by the same hand as this message. In fact, I deduce it was written by someone of a different nationality. This paper seal was placed just prior to the incident, by the victim himself, I would venture. Well, what have we here? Uh, uh, who are you, and what do you think you're doing here? Da, da, no one must touch before maritime police come. We must wait! Shh. That won't be necessary. You see, in less than five seconds from now, I will reveal the killer to you. Uh. What? <gasps> Don't be absurd! This is murder! I need cabin locked from inside! Ah yes, the locked room. But that mystery is paper thin. You, you don't mean the culprit is in there? <laughs> who, who are you? And where have you come from? I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Herlock Sholmes. I presume... You must have heard of me. What's going on? Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. Wait, I can't move. What the? Why am I in handcuffs? So you wake up now, hmm? Oh, wait. We had to drag you out of wardrobe. I do not believe how you could not wake up. You are a true cold blooded man. You. You found me then. The we found you. Now you pay, criminal. How long are you hiding in that tiny wardrobe, hmm? Sorry. Now you have been found. It is time to admit your crimes. Unless you want to find how the cold the ocean is. No, no I'll tell you everything. There's only one thing I want tonight from you. 
Oh, crap, I was wrong again. Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? Masusato. Wait, what did you just say? Take his life? Where is he? Where is Kazuma? Damn, that's crazy. You pretend you do not know. You are a wolf in the sheep spirit. You are the killer. Do not try to make excuses. What? Kazuma-sama was... Kazuma-sama's body was discovered not long ago. Here, in this very cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. His body? Please, do not try to tell us you're doing this terrible thing in your sleep. Cosmos dead? But he can't be. And these handcuffs. Surely you don't think I... I have to know. Why did you take Kazuma-sama's life? Answer me, please! No. Kazuma. It was just two short weeks ago. Are you sure about this? Won't we get in trouble? <laughs> Don't you find it fun being a stowaway? Besides, how else could you come to England with me to study? It was really something else when they brought your luggage in here earlier, though. The way that Russian crewman just tossed your traveling case onto the floor. I thought I was going to die. Yes, I still can't believe that. I really didn't think you'd be able to fit inside my trunk. You must be even less of a man than you look. Hey, honestly, I thought I'd broken every bone in my body. Well, it's about 50 days until we dock in Great Britain. Damn. But if you confine yourself to my cabin here, I don't expect anyone will discover you. I hope not. I get the feeling those Russians wouldn't be very forgiving of a stowaway. They're a sturdy bunch, that's for sure. What I want to know is, why do we need to keep it a secret from the young lady? From our faithful judicial assistant, Mikotoba, you mean? From your close friend, more to the point, surely we could confide in her, couldn't we? I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. It's best that only you and I know about this. I suppose so. Anyway, it's about time. It's about the time that the steward is supposed to come and clean the cabin. I know it's cramped, but you better get in there. I think it, it won't be for long. <laughs> Anyway, compared to hiding inside my traveling case, it'll be a breeze. Yes, but what if the steward decides to open the wardrobe for some reason? Then I'll be in for, sh for it. Stop worrying. I'll tell you what. Why don't you write keep out or something on this piece of paper? Then I can stick it over the wardrobe doors once you're inside. I don't know. We've only been at sea for about 15 days. How can this have happened? We were supposed to be going on this adventure to England together. We leave you at next port. Stay quiet until then. Don't make more trouble for yourself. Murderer. No, I'm not a murderer. Uh, you said before 
You said you admit everything about their crimes. No, that's not right. I mean, yes, I did stow away on the ship, but murdering my best friend? No one else could have done it. Admit the truth. Um, Susudo-san? Please tell me what happened. I need to know. <coughs> Very well. But there's something I would like to ask of you, too. This nightmare is getting worse by the minute. I suppose all I can do is try, now f try to find out what really happened. He really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream. And these handcuffs, they think I did it? They think I'm Kazuma's killer? When they found him, the cab was locked from the inside. What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via a porthole window and the boat on the door can't be operated from the outside. In other words, after the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped these four walls. Or to put it another way, the culprit can only have been someone inside this cabin. Or do you have some other explanation? How did he die then? What happened exactly? Are you still going to deny the charge, even despite the circumstances? Please, Susano-san, you have to help me. The cause of death is still undetermined. The ship doctor, the ship's doctor is examining the body, but of course he has no post-mortem analysis experience. I don't suppose we shall learn more until an expert has been consulted at our next port of call. So presumably that means that there were no obvious external signs of injury then. That's true, yes. Can't anyone tell me what actually happened here in this cabin? I don't understand it. Why would anyone want to kill Kazuma? Presumably that's something you know the answer to better than anyone. Please. Whatever you say, you were here in the cabin after all. Well, yes, I was, but... <coughs> he would always wake before dawn and do his training first thing in the morning. I was waiting outside his cabin, as I have every day so far on this voyage. But this morning, he did not come. I can sense that he wouldn't. Does that mean he was already dead when susudo san arrived at his cabin door, I wonder? I knocked, but there was no reply. Then I started to become worried, so I went to find a member of the crew. The crewman forced the cabin door open, and when we managed to get inside, there was Kazuma-sama collapsed on the floor. I had no idea anything had happened. I must have been asleep in the wardrobe somehow. I wish it wasn't the case, but this is very hard to believe. Now I've told you everything that I know, so it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes, all right.
Why are you even on board this ship, Naruhoto san? You said something before about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yes, I'm afraid that's true. It's two weeks since we left Japan now, and I've been shut up in this cabin ever in the entire time. I had no idea. But how could you have occupied Cosmos Hama's cabin for so long without him noticing? No, that would have been impossible, obviously. Yes, of course. Cosmo invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. He actually asked you? But why? I'm afraid I don't really know the reason myself. I don't understand. Cosmo, why do you want this? What's the real reason? Why go to such extreme lengths to smuggle me to England with you? It's an idea that's been on my mind ever since the end of that incredible trial. I told you, I think I told you, deny it, that you ought to become a lawyer yourself. Well, yes, you did say that, but I didn't think you were serious. You have a talent for it. I can assure you of that. But I've never really thought about, but I've never really thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, that's something you can decide for yourself. London is at the spearhead of cultural development, the center of the world in many ways. There can't be any harm in seeing such an important place with your own eyes, can there? Well, no, definitely not. But on a personal level, if you were to become a lawyer, then... Then what? Nothing. Forget it. Kazuma-sama is, he always saying the same thing, that he wanted to change the Japanese legal system. Perhaps he thought that he could do that with you. Yes, maybe. But something's still bothering me a little. The look in his eyes then, it was darker than I've ever seen it before. Um, Susudo-san, I'm really sorry that we kept it a secret from you. My stowing away on the ship, I mean. If I know Kazuma-sama, I expect he was trying to protect me to avoid me becoming guilty by association. That's exactly right, yes. If you're not the culprit, then tell me. What happened last night here in this cabin? Well, the thing is, I don't really remember. Cosmo brought me something to eat, just like he always did. And then I got myself into that wardrobe over there, just like I always did. After that, I fell asleep. Well... Yes. So deeply that you didn't even stir when Kazuma Sama was killed? Well, yes. I know it sounds unbelievable, really, I do, but it's the truth. If only I'd woken up, then perhaps I wouldn't be in this predicament. And for some reason, my head's still throbbing like anything. Really? Is something wrong? Oh, um, no, it's... Please forget it. Suzo-san, you have to believe me. I didn't do it. I really don't want to doubt you. But the trouble is, there is no one else who could possibly have done this. 